Hi, welcome back to My Perspective. If you're new here, I'm your host, Shelby. Today, we're going to be talking about my perfect solo day. If you are my friend or you're my boyfriend, this is the perfect episode for you to listen to because now you'll know what I want to do every single day with you. This is going to be a pretty quick episode because I've got a lot of stuff going on, but I still want to get something out for y'all this weekend. I'm stoked. I'm picking up from the airport tomorrow. This is what inspired this episode because I'm planning a whole weekend for her to visit me, and I'm basically planning three perfect days that I adore and making her do them all with me because I know sh- we have the same type of vibe. We're friends, obviously, so I know she'll enjoy almost all of what I want to do. If you're ever figuring out, oh, what should you do at Shelby? These are some great ideas for you. Or maybe this is going to be the podcast where you figure out a perfect day for yourself to spend alone or spend with a new best friend. This is my perfect day and it's honestly the best. I'm so excited for her to visit and show her all around Orange County. My last episode, I told you I was going to Chicago and obviously I went to Chicago. It's a mini version of New York. I never knew that. It's such a cool city. There are so many skyscrapers. And in my head, I was thinking, "Mm, not really for me. Sitting on a boat in the sun seems fun, but not with a guy talking the whole time. And basically, okay, we're sitting there at the boat tour. And the announcer or instructor or whatever of the boat tour basically told us we can't talk. We can't have crying kids. No conversations no phone calls at first because he said like no crying kids take it downstairs i thought he meant a joke yes nobody loves crying kids the tour was so interesting i actually did want people to stop talking because i wanted to hear what he said and i'm not one interested in architecture whatsoever but for some reason i really liked it and then as we walked around the city because it was our first day there it was i just felt so smart walking around the town being like oh That building is shaped like a pizza inside, and every single person's room gets larger as they go towards the windows. Or this building was built so that every single person did not need to leave the little building. There is a gym, there is a theater, there is restaurant, whatever you need. Not only was I captivated, oh my god, the AC's on, that's why I can hear the noise. I turned the AC on so I wouldn't die of heat while I recorded. I felt so knowledgeable walking around this entire tour. I mean, of Chicago, because I loved the history, and I am not a history junkie whatsoever. I'm more of a numbers girl and people people person. I think that's what I realized. In my job, or just like jobs in general, I don't really care about the job. I just want to talk to the person. Like, I'm such a people person. I just want to know everything about them. Maybe that's my fault, because then I never talk about myself. But then, yeah, I have a podcast all about me. You know, I just love to tell strangers about myself instead of people I'm actually in person with. So maybe if you're my friend, just listen to my podcast because I'm not going to tell you in person because I don't like vulnerability. It kind of scares me and I'm reading a whole book about having friends and making friends and maintaining friendships. And the whole book is about vulnerability. It's like I've had so many bad instances with friends who've made me then reiterate that I do not want to be vulnerable because every time I am, there's a bad reaction from that person or they force it out of me instead of me doing it on my own terms, but then I wait so long until then it feels awkward and then I just never say anything. So basically the whole book I'm reading, it's called Find Your People. Why am I talking about vulnerability? I don't really know. I went on a tangent. Chicago, so awesome. The deep dish gluten-free pizza overrated. It was because it was gluten-free, but I heard their pizza is amazing if you're not gluten-free. Next is we went with Max's family or his mom and his brother and their family friends. I have like once gone over their house without Max and I need to do that again. Love their family. It was such a great time. We, his mom is the ultimate planner. So we did so many things around Chicago and I'm a planner, but at the same time, I'm not a planner. So it was nice that someone else was doing it and there was no pressure on me to do it. And we did a lot throughout the town. I haven't seen Max in forever and I won't see him for another two and a half months. So it was good to have some quality time and just spend some time together. Rekindle our relationship because sometimes long distance is difficult and I only get to see him so many times here. My third update is I am drowning in homework and that also kind of goes into something I'm working on this week or I'm going to work on in in this next week is learning what to prioritize. I think I've got the work-life balance going on but I always overbook myself. I have like three jobs, I'm always so worried of having nothing to do 
to where I book myself to then I get stressed out because I'm doing too much. So currently I'm in, I'm working 40 hours a week for my internship. I'm supposed to be doing social media for my job I coached at, which I'm slacking on because I'm overbooked. I'm taking 12 units of summer school, which I'm done next week, thank God. And I have a podcast. I'm doing this, I guess it's a volunteer, I don't really know. I'm doing a financial analyst program, which I have a huge paper due on Monday and I haven't started because I forgot about it. I didn't know we had things. I didn't know we had due dates for this. I thought it was just meetings. And I have a dog, long distance boyfriend, and I'm trying to make friends in the new city. So I've got a lot on my plate to where I honestly, my social life comes into play and I want to be social. I want to make friends, but sometimes I'm overbooking myself because I already have deadlines and expectations and stuff I committed to already. So I'm having a hard time balancing And once my summer school is done, I should be free and have at least one more hour a week left of my day. Thankfully, my parents have been helping out me so a lot too. And then my obsession of this week is Instagram threads. I know a lot of people like Twitter, but I've never been into it. I probably had it in middle school. Instagram threads feels feminine. Twitter's manly and it's low key. Most of the people I follow are on it. I'm not well with my written words i would say tiktok in my podcast so visually i like that stuff but maybe i have some quick words i want to get out there and shoot some inspo i also say every time i post a podcast on there also i post every time i listen to a really good podcast so that's kind of why i like it because maybe people on instagram are annoyed all the podcasts i post all right those That is all for today's intro. Let's just get into my perfect solo day. And maybe this will inspire you to create your perfect summer day, solo day, and go and do it. When am I going to do this? I don't really know. I guess this weekend with Hannah. This is just my perfect day. All right, let's say this perfect day is a Saturday. Maybe it's a Sunday. I say Saturday because Sunday, then you're like, oh, I got work the next day. So let's do Saturday. Before we get into it, this episode is extremely unstructured. I feel like my podcast is mainly structured and thought out and well written and blah, blah, blah. But this one, because it's already 9 p.m. and I'm usually sleeping by now, I just want to let my thoughts flow and maybe... Maybe something good will come of it. Maybe I'm meant for the chill, unstructured, free of thought podcast. Maybe not the structured ones for me. We'll see. We'll, we'll see what y'all like. I want to wake up early, hopefully on my own. I don't want to set an alarm that's blaring at my head. I want to be woken up by the sunlight. So I have windows, a lot of windows in my place, but I have curtains. They're kind of janky, but I've got curtains over all my windows. My place isn't set up yet. There's this massive window at the top of my roof. And there's no curtains that can reach it. No matter how many windows, I mean curtains I have, it will always be bright in my apartment. Also loud because I live by the street, unfortunately. And it makes me wake up a little bit earlier and then it gets hot in my apartment, so I wake up. So hopefully I wake up somewhat early on this Saturday morning. And you know what the perfect morning would be if I was waking up next to Max? But luckily, I got Miso instead. He's my buffer of a boyfriend. Thank God Miso's a boy. So my favorite thing with Max is our mornings together. So I think it's kind of ironic that my favorite thing about Miso is our mornings together. He snuggles me. He rarely snuggles. He went through this like pre-teenage phase where he wouldn't cuddle me and didn't show me any affection. It was so upsetting. That's why I got a dog. He would only give me affection in the morning and he would cuddle me and he would yawn and stretch and it was just the best part. If I'm going to start off a good morning, it's going to be next to me so doing that. Okay, when I get up from bed, we're going to do the full skincare routine, blue light, red light, washing it, exfoliating, the whole thing. Just really taking my time, letting my body adjust, looking at my aura ring stat, texting Max good morning, nothing crazy. Honestly, I need to go into my morning routine. My morning routine is pretty basic. I'll give you guys a little short rundown. I want to do a whole episode on my morning routine, but I keep it simple. I wake up, I text Max good morning, I snuggle miso. I usually would make myself a matcha and like go run out the door for a workout, but we're doing my solo slow day. So I'll brush my teeth, do my skincare, 
put on some workout clothes. I hate clothes, so I only wear workout clothes. I'm usually so thirsty in the morning, so I'll chug some water. I know you're probably supposed to brush your teeth before you chug water, but sometimes I need to drink water immediately. And I also need to get into oil pulling and tongue scraping. I tried tongue scraping and it hurt my tongue, so I wasn't a fan, but maybe I need to buy a new one. And then I also had a, my first one got moldy and that freaked me out. I think the problem with me not having a structure to this podcast is I'm getting really distracted and set tracked. I just cuddled me so for a minute. I feed me so obviously and I let him out to go to the bathroom. If we're talking about my perfect day is we're going to put on some workout clothes and we're going to walk to my local coffee shop. I have a f- I have three coffee shops and maybe has a gluten-free pastry. You know, while being gluten-free, I found out a year ago that I was gluten-free. The best thing that's come from it is because I am so limited from so many options when I go places, I am just way more gro- grateful for when there is a gluten-free option and it's yummy, especially pastries or anything sweet because I have the biggest sweet tooth. Next Tuesday, I'm going to BJ's and I'm getting a gluten-free bazooki because I just found out last week or when I was in Chicago that they have gluten-free bazookis and I need one. We'll get into dessert by the end of this episode, but oh my god, I need one. I would say we're going to walk to a coffee shop, the one that has matcha, and I get an iced matcha unsweetened with raw almond milk, and then maybe a little gluten-free pastry on the side, and I will either walk around with miso, sit down and enjoy. Actually, I'm going to sit down and enjoy my matcha, like with a to-go, or I mean with a for it here cup. That is key. Not a to-go cup, a for here cup. Okay, I can either get matcha and chat with a friend, or I can bring my Kindle and read a good book. But currently, I'm reading Find Your People. I don't love it, but it does got some key points. Um, I'm also reading The Power of Now, another romance novel, and then there's this other, oh, 101 essays you have to read to change your mindset or something. So I'm reading like four books right now. I'd be reading that. Chill there for a minute. After that, on my walk with Miso, I'm 100% going to listen to a podcast. The whole reason why I started my own podcast was because I probably listen to three to four podcast episodes a day, including reading or listening to audiobooks and reading books. I am not a music girl. Absolutely am a diehard podcast girl and audiobook girl and books. This probably happened my sophomore year of college because up leading up to my freshman year of college, I hated silence and I would play music 24-7. My boyfriend absolutely loves music and is always playing music. By the end of the year, when you get your Apple Music or Spotify kind of summary of how much music you listen to the whole year and your top artists, I had double or triple the amount of music he played in a year. Only because I played music nonstop and I don't know where the switch happened, but from somehow I have music taste that I like. I like this one podcast. This girl I used to be friends with in college actually my freshman year. Um she showed me her pod or her Spotify, not her Spotify, her Apple playlist and I loved it. I've never been one to find music on my own. I just loved listening to other people's playlists or like curating a playlist from their music. So basically she had a playlist that was absolutely perfect for me. That was my taste, what I like. And now Three years later, we're not, we're just acquaintances now, like we're not good friends anymore, but I still listen to her playlist every single day. I mean, I don't listen to music every day, but I, every, if I'm going to play music, it's going to be her playlist and people are like, oh my gosh, you have such, you have such good music taste. And I'm like, no, I don't. I know every single one of these songs because I listen to this girl's playlist. I don't even know if she adds songs to it anymore, but that's the only playlist I listen to. I to listen to a podcast. And sometimes I think I have information overflow. It's honestly the, it's like my favorite part. I think I'm just talking to these people and having a conversation with them. And I honestly think they're my friends at this point. The reason why I started my own podcast is my love for podcasts because I listen to them every single day and I find them so inspiring. Only listen to podcasts that really align with what I value in life, which is health, fitness, wellness, lifestyle in your 20s i actually i actually really like interviews as well skinny confidential is my favorite podcast ever and it's all basically interview based i would love for lauren and michael to do more solo episodes and talk about what they believe but i get snippets from all their episodes they have 500 and i 
probably listened to 400 of them. So I started a podcast because I listened to so many of these topics that I genuinely have learned so much from and where I think most of my knowledge and credibility is from and what I find so interesting. But sometimes the way people talk about things, mainly the younger, not like Lauren, she's a queen. The younger podcasters that I listen to, they talk about topics where I want to talk about. I listen to it and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have so much to add on this topic. So many directions that I would go differently. And I did learn from their episode, but I want to expand on it. And I noticed that so many times over the years of listening to podcasts. So I knew I needed to start my own. And also I thought about starting this podcast for two years. There were so many times where I'm like, I would excel so much at being a podcaster. I love speaking. I love talking. I love sharing stories and tips and tricks. And I'm going to school to become a health coach. And this just aligns so much with what I value and what I want to do with my life. And my favorite part about it is nobody gets to see me. Yes, eventually one day I'll do video, but when I'm listening to a podcaster, I'm only listening to their voice and their thoughts. I'm not focused on what they look like. I think there's so much there's so much media and consumption out there that's focused on what we look like, and I just wanted one platform where it's not based off what I look like. It's based off what I know and how knowledgeable and relatable and the type of person I am. I have listened to so many podcasts and then I go find them on social media. Sometimes I already followed them and it was crazy because I didn't put two and two together. I didn't realize they were the same person. I have an inner bias. I'm going to be completely honest about that. And I liked that I couldn't see what they looked like before because I didn't judge them a single bit of what they looked like. I only I only judge them based off their brain and that is I think one of the best qualities you can have is really comparing someone to their knowledge not on what their body looks like or what their face looks like or their hair you're only caring about their intellectual skills that is why I like podcasts after my podcast my walk with miso I'm gonna take him home he's gonna be all tired I got my vitamin d in and my matcha and my that wasn't a breakfast but I'll probably make like an avocado toast or something. That's my favorite breakfast, even though avocados make my stomach hurt. I'm a breakfast girl, but at the same time, I'm getting bored of my breakfasts. Avocado toast, I can eat every day. Then is my little morning workout would be going to Pilates. I'm a Pilates girl through and through. I have some of my favorite Pilates classes here. You can pretty much do Pilates almost in every phase of your cycle on currently on my period. So, the easy or stretching Pilates classes, then in your follicular phase, you can do a cardio-based Pilates class. Then there's also HIT, so like a sculpt Pilates. And then in your luteal phase, you can do the strength and like level two Pilates classes. So that's why I like Pilates. It's so differ- diversified, kind of like yoga, also like strength training. So I'm a Pilates girl. I can walk to some of the Pilates places around me too. Most of the instructors instructors are amazing. I just need to get out there and speak to the people around me. I also love to film myself doing Pilates. It's great content for myself. And then I like putting my podcast over it. So it's kind of a double hit. And I think I with doing with doing Pilates, I've seen such a difference in the tone of my body. And I don't usually sweat. It's pretty easy. And I can go to work after or I don't have to like shower. Some classes are hard, but some are just, it's mindless. I enjoy it a lot. Next is, I gotta eat some lunch. I actually never do this, but I feel like I'd really like this. Ooh, maybe go to farmer's market. You know, we're gonna add farmer's market in here. Mm, Or, okay, I'm gonna give you two options for what I would like to do during lunchtime. So, Laguna Beach has a farmer's market from 9 to 12 on Saturdays. Either go to a farmer's market, walk around, then go to the beach and bring all my snacks with me to the beach and read and lay out and go to the ocean or just like go to lunch. So for lunch, some of my favorite places is Mendocino Farms, amazing chicken salad, chicken Caesar salad. Their sweet fin has really good gluten-free pokey slash, yeah, it's pokey um, and it comes in a cute little bento box. Another place I just found near me is called Vibe, and it's all soy, gluten, oil, like everything free and organic or whatever. It's kind of my perfect lunch spot. I think it's vegetarian too. I'm not vegetarian, but I'll eat it. I don't mind. 
pick up lunch from one of my favorite lunch spots. I also really like Malibu Farms. Pick up lunch and then go to the beach, eat my lunch, relax, read a book, and just lay out and go in the ocean. Maybe even surf a little bit. You know, but just being at the beach, when I, I lived here two years ago just for the summer, and I lived with the sweetest little family. I rented a room from them for like 500 bucks a month or something, and they were, only once they woke me up, but other than that, they were great to live with. After work, I would work from 6 to 2.30, I was a barista, and I would just go to the beach, and I looked so homeless. I would wear a sweatshirt and sweat because it would be cold at the beach and i would just sleep actually sometimes it'd be hot but i would sit i would sleep on the beach with no towel just face first in the sand sleeping and i would just sleep there for like two hours i looked really homeless and i just knew people were walking by laughing at me but it was such a nice break because i wasn't on my phone i was just grounding and listening to the waves and not caring about what i looked like so sometimes the ocean is my safe spot. I remember in high school, like when I would get really sad, I would drive to the beach, bring a blanket, and just curl up in in the dark, stare at the ocean, and relax. I live a mile from the two miles from the beach, and I should probably utilize it to my fullest extent. So that's what I would do in the afternoon. And then after the beach, I would come home and shower. I think the best feeling is when you're a little bit tanned and you go come and shower and get dressed. And so you can do this with someone too. You just have to be by yourself. After I'm ready, I come home. I'd probably go on another mini walk just to get Miso some energy out or play with him. And my favorite food is sushi. So I'd probably want a sushi dinner. I've gone out to sushi alone quite a bit. I love sushi. My favorite rolls are a salmon Alaskan roll and a baked lobster roll usually don't finish it all so i'll have a little bit leftovers because the big salmon i mean the big lobster rolls are massive but so yummy i'm quarter japanese so i love japanese food i'm going to japan in october it's just a little fact for y'all after dinner by myself not super glamorous i'd probably just read a book while i'm there my next part is my nighttime routine i feel like my mornings and my nights are like my ideal time recently have been doing this next thing quite a bit but i usually grab takeout for dinner kind of like what i did for lunch but they i go to newport peninsula or the wedge because a lot of people bring their dogs there even though it's not a dog beach it's just more secluded than let's say 32nd street so i'd pick up dinner or i'd already have eaten dinner maybe bring dessert and bring miso with me to the peninsula at night there's usually like a lot of parking and I would let him run around and I get to once again sit in the sand and watch sunset. That's what Hannah and I are doing tomorrow so I'm very excited for that. Sunsets are usually stunning here in California. Miso is so excited to be outside. He honestly wants to do anything with me. I don't usually, there's not usually dogs to play with him, but I'll bring a toy and he loves to dig. His favorite thing in slow was the dunes and he would just dig on dig. He's not a water dog, unfortunately, so he won't go in the water. He just likes to be there, you know? My nighttime routine or just what I try to do all the time with Max is when we come home, my favorite my favorite dessert is cookies and ice cream. I love warm cookies and ice cream. So I'd probably make cookies and ice cream, make some tea for myself, mo- probably spearmint tea, and end the night with a movie. I currently don't have a TV at my place and I probably won't get one. I really want one, but there's nowhere to put it. I just, I can see myself and Max ending most nights, watching a show together. I love starting shows with someone and we only watch it together and then making cookies and ice cream and that is my perfect day and cuddles. But if I'm alone, I'd still do that by myself and then I usually do like my LED mask or read but on my ideal day, I'm probably reading a lot already so I want to wind down with a movie. Yeah, I don't know, just relax, snuggle me so hang out. All right, so that is my perfect solo day or my perfect day that I would plan with someone else. There's, There was the morning portion, the midday, and then that late night. I kind of try to do at least one of these things every single day. So like today, I made sure I made my matcha and I brought it with me to work. 
Um, I hung out with my sister and we watched the Kardashians together and made dinner. Tomorrow, I'm doing the Peninsula Sunset and takeout together with Hannah. I try to do a little bit of one thing every day to make every single day special. But I'm kind of stressed right now. I have a lot to do. I want to make my place look as good as it can. It's obviously not perfect because I moved in a month ago. But I want Hannah to have a really good trip. And I have quite a bit of homework to do. And I have to edit this podcast. And I have that big paper for that finance report I'm doing. Which I have no idea what I'm doing. And Miso, my parents watched Miso for two days because he's really not loving the apartment so far. I just want to snuggle him and give him some attention. I was so glad you guys could listen to today's episode. Follow my perspective podcast on Instagram and Shellbright on TikTok. And I hope you liked today's episode. Take one or two things that you're going to implement into your own week or day. And I hope you guys have a great night. Bye.